Welcome to Contact. We're so excited that you joined us today because we're starting a brand new series called The Salt Life. Now, The Salt Life is so much more than just a beach lifestyle or a brand of clothing or accessories. You know, today's message is called The Salt of the Earth. Now, maybe you've heard someone ca called The Salt of the Earth before, or maybe you're we've, uh, referred to someone else as a real salt of the earth kind of person when you were describing them to someone you didn't know. But Jesus taught that we as Christians are the salt of the earth. And we're going to be learning more about what that really means. Yeah, well, that means that we're the seasoning of the earth and, yes. you know, like salt's used for a lot of different things. But one thing it does is it prepares food to be stored. That's right, a preservative. It's a preservative. Yeah, yeah. so we're the salt of the earth, the Bible says. So yeah. that means that just our presence, yeah. our lifestyle, right. we're going to talk about a lifestyle. Yeah. Of course, your lifestyle has to line up with being, uh, having to do with preserving agent, you know, so that, that it uh, he affects talked, Jesus talks about that too, you know, about keeping your saltiness, your yeah. savor. Right. So uh, if you want to be more salty, stick around. We've got lots to say about that. We'll see you back in a few minutes. With on-time messages, exciting events, an active children's ministry and youth group, Bible school, and much more, there will always be something for you and your family. Come worship, receive, and fellowship with us every Sunday morning at 8.30 and 10.30 a.m., Sunday evenings at 7 p.m., and Wednesdays at 7.30 p.m. Want to find out more about us? Visit our website at faithlandmarks.org. We look forward to seeing you here at Faith Landmarks Ministries. God is calling the body of Christ to wake up. 2024 will be a year of great revival and kingdom advancement. With new opportunities available for outreach around the world, our mission's efforts will be increasing at a swift pace. This year, we have plans to directly sow the Word of God into Nigeria and Vietnam, along with creating opportunities for our youth to get involved in missions here in the U.S. Your missions giving plays a significant role by providing FLM with the financial means to reach the lost. Whether it be through in-person outreach or by supporting ministries worldwide, FLM ensures your financial seed is put into good ground where an abundant harvest awaits. 2024 is our year to wake up, focus in, and set our eyes on the prize. Sow a seed into missions today. Glory to God. Okay. Uh, the salt life. Hallelujah. Look at verse 13 and Jesus is going to identify you. Verse 13, he says, you are the salt of the earth. Now, you know, you're not the same crowd of people, but you're like those people. Okay. They, they came from all over. If you go back and, and look at what happened, they came from all around. It, it was a Roman environment. And so they came from the seacoast, they came from around the Sea of Galilee, they came from Judea, okay, they came from uh, Syria and all those places, and they, they came to hear Jesus, okay, and he identified them because of the way they were about the kingdom. He identified them as the salt of the earth. So uh, here you are, I'm going to go ahead and get you uh, to identify with uh, the kingdom. How, how many of you love the kingdom of God? And you understand what you're talking about. Yeah, go ahead and lift your hand up in the air. Glory to God. Yeah, if you don't understand it yet, it's all right. Jesus said, seek first the kingdom of God. In fact, he says that in the next chapter. Uh, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things will be added unto you. No point in going seeking the things when you're the salt of the earth, if you just focus on the kingdom, he's going to give you everything. All right. You are the salt of the earth, but if the salt has lost its savor, which we're going to talk somewhat about that today, wherewith shall it be salted? It is therefore good for nothing, but can be cast out to be, but to be cast out and to be trodden underfoot of men. 
Okay, now we're just drawing a parallel. This is the natural salt that most people are familiar with. You know, when you start talking about salt, this is the thing that people think you're, you're describing. Okay, but Jesus said, you're the salt of the earth. You're not in that bottle. You get the point. Okay, so we're just going to, I'm going to just, wow. Okay, so that's kosher salt. That's white in nature. Okay, and then here's one that's pink. Wow, it really came out of that one. <laughs> A lot more of that one. <laughs> okay, and watch this. Yeah, okay. And then, so, so uh, I'm, this is a demonstration. Most people in the world think that is what church is. You know, but it's a mixture of, and, and this church is definitely a mixture of different kinds of people. Okay, but you are not the salt of the earth because of the way you look on the outside. See, as a matter of fact, looking in a mirror, you won't see yourself. You have to look in the mirror of the word to see yourself. And then what you'd be looking at is the inner man. So when Jesus was talking to the crowd, what, who was he talking to? The outer man or the inner man? Yeah. See, he already knew they were the salt of the earth by watching what they were doing. So here you are. This is the reason why you're here this morning. You're the salt of the earth. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know, it, it is not, it's not the kind of work you do. It's not what group you come from, what part of the world you're from. Hallelujah. Okay, so uh, you have a heart for the kingdom. That's the reason why you're here. And what God is going to do is he's going to meet you where you're at. You know, and he's going to cause great things to come into your life. That statement that Jesus made, the seed is the word. Remember, he was telling the parable of the sower and he was just, the sower was just casting seed to the wind. Okay, well, the seed that he was casting to the wind is the word. And somehow it got on me and somehow it got on you. Okay, and I simply accepted the word that I heard. That was good enough. Praise the Lord. And then God, uh, you know, started building things in me. Now, here, here's what we're doing here. The reason why we're here. We're, we're that crowd. And with everything that he says to you, he's building something in your life. You're growing in him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Okay, so, uh, wow, I have another one for you, if you would, please, uh, while you go over to Mark chapter 9, while you're going over there, uh, I want to make a few statements to you. First of all, Jesus was referring to an inner quality of those people, which is spiritual in nature. Now, you know, he could tell by looking at it what they were doing in being there, he could tell that they already had a salty, they, they had the salt life. Okay, and, and the salt life, you're, you're going to see those bumper stickers. That's talking about going to the beach or going fishing or something. We're, we're not talking about that. You already have a salt life and it's, it's in the kingdom. Now, the kingdom uh, doesn't just come with you to church. The kingdom goes to your house. The kingdom goes to your job. How many of you understand that? Okay. So you seek first the kingdom. It's, it's not a uh, thank God for Sunday church. Okay. But this is not the only uh, time that you go kingdom. So you're seeking first the kingdom. We were just singing about it a minute ago. As soon as you wake up, your feet hit the floor. You begin to worship him, bless him. Hallelujah. Yeah, his praise is in your mouth. Yeah, that, that's your salt life. You're salty already. Okay. So generally, people, and we're talking about people in general, uh, recognize the natural qualities of salt. Now, I've done just a little bit of research on this. Uh, and uh, 
So I'll, I'll just share a, a little bit of it with you. I took chemistry in school. So, you know, they started talking about the elements of salt. And, and I recognized by what they were saying, this is a very simple, basic element. It's really two, two uh, molecules fused together. Okay. And then all this flavor and so forth is added afterwards. Okay, so you can actually uh, get the savor of natural salt back. See, but Jesus wasn't talking about this. He was talking about this. Hallelujah. So you can't go parading your heart for the kingdom around in every venue that's out there and you're, you're going to lose your savor. Hallelujah. In fact, you know, Jesus actually warned against that. He, he said, you know, what you uh, shouldn't be doing is you shouldn't be casting your pearls before swine. We're going to read a little bit about that uh, here today. Not everybody is interested in your saltiness. A couple of other things about natural salt. Salt is, uh, was found to be and still is a natural preserving agent. Praise the Lord. So, uh, you know, nations in times past, they try to figure out, well, how do we, you know, we, we've got food. How do we keep it from rotting? Because, you know, they didn't have refrigeration. So they found out that salt would do it. Praise the Lord. So it, it's a natural pr uh, preserving agent. Hallelujah. Some of you have a really puzzled look on your face. I, I want, let me go ahead and read this to you. This is uh, Mark chapter 9. This is Jesus talking about it again. Uh, verse 49, he says, For everyone, that's you and me included, shall be salted with fire. Now, so I, I take that that what he's talking about is trouble comes. So there, there's trouble in the earth. How many of you realize there's trouble in the earth? Okay, but what he's going to do is he's, he's got a protected place for you. Under the shadow of the Almighty, he's got a place for you to be, regardless of what the season is, and you can escape the fire that's in the world. Everyone will be salted with fire, and every sac sacrifice shall be salted with salt. Now, under the Old Covenant, salt was a part of their sacrificial uh, means of approaching the Lord. And so they, they never offered anything before God that did not have salt in it. So I, I'm assuming that kosher salt is probably nothing but the raw material itself without the additives. Now, if, if you would look at that thing, you know, and I, I'm not a gourmet cook. It says uh, wor world gourmet. Well, that's certainly not me. I can boil water, <laughs> but my, the cooking is done right there on the front row. My wife, she, she's the cook. And my son back there, he, he's uh, like chef level. Okay, but they're, they're way, way beyond me. You know, if you, the, the hot dogs in, in, in the water on the stove, that's me. All right. So uh, verse 49 of Mark chapter 9, Jesus is a similar statement he's making to a different crowd of people. It says, for everyone shall be salted with fire and er every sacrifice shall be salted with salt. Salt is good, but if the salt has lost its saltness. Now that's very similar to what he said back here. You know, it's going to, you can lose your flavor. Hallelujah. Wherewith shall you season it? Now, you know, Jesus, you, you know, I just told you a, a little tiny uh, piece of chemistry. Jesus knew all of that from before the foundation of the world. You can't forget, he's the one that spoke all of this into existence. Okay, so he knew very well that natural salt can be restored to it. In fact, you can make it in a test tube, you know. <laughs> Maybe not a test tube, but some way there's a chemical process of putting the two elements together and, and it 
is salt. Now, it's going to taste salty to you, but it's not going to have all these flavors. That's the reason why they add all the flavors. Hallelujah. Are you out there? Glory to God. Okay. But what the world tries to do, see, uh, you, you are salty by nature because of who Jesus is on the inside of you. But what the world tries to do is it, it wants to put you together in one of these groups and get you all mixed up by, by color and by creed and, and all, all of these things. And then they're going to identify you by the outer man. Okay. Now, so if you allow that to happen to yourself, it will have an effect on you spiritually. Because you will, and, and this is one of the things Jesus was warning about, is it will cause you to lose your spiritual connection with God. You, you can't just go in and out of the world as, as you wish. You might have found that out already. Hallelujah. Yeah, Christians, uh, here's a little word for you, worldliness. See, you find it in the New Testament. But uh, you can't become worldly and kingdom at the same time. <laughs> so there, there has to be, you know, you, you have to have some uh, barrier things that are put up from time to time to keep the world from coming into your life. You have to, and I'm going to show you what it is here at the end. Hallelujah. All right, so natural salt requires a chemical process to restore its characteristics. But if you would go with me over to Colossians chapter 4, hallelujah, there's this uh, final uh, characteristic that we want to, we're just kind of drawing a bead on these things. This is the, the beginning of the series. So we're, we're purposely not trying to roll everything out in detail to you. Which is the reason why you need to keep coming to church. So you get the whole picture. Yeah, get it fed down on the inside of you, but recognize you're already the salt of the earth. So you're not trying to become something that you're not. Positionally, see that's called positional truth. Positionally, you're already salty. Now what Jesus just introduced to you is that you could lose some of your savor. Now notice how quiet it got all of a sudden. Because not everybody in the kingdom is, is convinced of that. All right. So uh, look at these two verses, Colossians chapter 4, look at verse 5, it says, walk in wisdom. Now this is the Apostle Paul, by the Holy Ghost speaking to the, the church at Colossae, walk in wisdom towards them that are without. Now that's what I just told you in so many words. So you can't just go mixing with the, wor with the world without realizing what is going to have the effect that it's going to have on you. And so you got to have your armor on. That's the reason why it's called in Ephesians chapter 6, the armor of, of God, the armor of the Lord. Okay, we, we also call it prayer armor. Getting quiet in this place. Hallelujah. Yeah, you know, and uh, you don't need to know a few prayer warriors in the church you need to be the prayer warrior in your own life. You're the, you're the one that is washed in the blood of the Lamb, called by the name that's above every name. You have access to the throne of grace. So anything that shortens your reach in getting to God is going to get in your way. You don't need to go through a personage that, you know, I, I try to be invisible as much as possible. But, you know, I am a pastor, but that's it. People want me to pray for them. I'll pray for you, but it's not any different than you praying. Amen. Hallelujah. God is good. Okay. <clears throat> Walk in wisdom towards them that are without redeeming the time. 
Uh, now, that's, that's a phrase that's used in the New Testament to talk about having reference to the times that you're in. Okay, and so what that means to us is we're at the end of the end times. Now, I, I'm not going to stand here and tell you that I know when, but I do know it's coming. Welcome back. Wow, it's a great thing that you're with us today, the beginning of this series, and this is one of the things that Jesus talked about repetitively with his disciples, all the people that were following him, is that they were the salt of the earth. And, and then he made the, the statements about if salt loses its savor, where, where do you go to get it back? Right. So obviously Jesus is aware of the chemical process. Of course, yeah. he was there in the beginning of the <laughs> yeah. creation of the world. Right. So he understands all of that. That's so true. he's the perfect one to refer to. You also made the statement that um, we need to have salt in our speech. Right. So that means that our words should minister grace Seasoned with salt to the hearers yeah. so that we are actually thinking about what we're saying, realizing that our words yeah. uh, are casting so a vision. So it's describing that God has put us in a principal place mm -hmm. of influence over other people's lives. Right. And, and how when people come in contact you, with you, your words, your uh, body language, your physical carriage, the way you present yourself is all, you know, viewed by the world. And hopefully it is that grace of saltiness that is uh, makes things tasteful. Yeah. Hopefully as a Christian, you aren't being untasteful. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But it's uh, like he said, what you say can um, calm down a whole situation just by the grace in your words. Right. Mm hmm. And your presence. And your presence. So we, we're so excited about all these upcoming events that are happening here. We're preparing for our coming summer outreaches in our surrounding areas. And we've got a lot of building projects here at our home base. This is always exciting for us. And we want to extend the invitation to you that if you're new to the area or you're looking for a home church, we want to welcome you and invite you to come and join us in person for any of our services, events, or fellowships. Now, I just want to say, I was shocked to find out we had people who came to our church for our Sunday night service and Wednesday night services, and they were new. So I said to them, wow, how did you find out about our church? And they said, well, we were just looking for a place to go to church on Sunday night and Wednesday night, and you were the only ones having church. So we just want to say we're here. We've got ministry for the children, the youth, for every age group. We actually have an entire department called Connections, where you can learn more about our church and how you can get connected and involved. And we'd also like to invite you to partner with us, spreading the good news of Jesus Christ around the world by becoming a contact partner. You'll find our partnership information on our contact website, contact.tv, and click on the partnership tab. So if you haven't become a contact partner, you can also give to help support this broadcast, also our worldwide missions, and then we have local outreach programs. Just click on the Give tab. That's right, and the Bible School, this is a shocking thing for a lot of people, but the Bible School is actually paid for already, and it's, it's scholarship to, to the whole rest of the world Right, in scholarship. Once you get outside of the of, of the United States, and in the United States, there's nothing about it that is expensive. Right. But um, so you, you know, can go to Bible school wherever right. you are. Just go to our website and check it out. FLBI.org is you know we got several websites, but that's the one that is specifically geared towards uh, the uh, Bible school. Right. So let's take a look. Let's let them take a look at what's coming up. God is calling the body of Christ to wake up. 2024 will be a year of great revival and kingdom advancement. With new opportunities available for outreach around the world, our missions efforts will be increasing at a swift pace. 
This year, we have plans to directly sow the Word of God into Nigeria and Vietnam, along with creating opportunities for our youth to get involved in missions here in the U.S. Your missions giving plays a significant role by providing FLM with the financial means to reach the lost. Whether it be through in-person outreach or by supporting ministries worldwide, FLM ensures your financial seed is put into good ground where an abundant harvest awaits. 2024 is our year to wake up, focus in, and set our eyes on the prize. Sow a seed into missions today. With on-time messages, exciting events, an active children's ministry and youth group, Bible school, and much more, there will always be something for you and your family. Visit our website at faithlandmarks.org. Hallelujah. We're dismissed. Man, that was a pretty cool church service. What'd you think? Yeah, no, I thought it was great. Did you hear about all the stuff they got going on here? I did. It's a bunch, but they all sound pretty exciting. So maybe we could go to a couple. Maybe we can go outside and find someone who'd know about the events. What do you say? Yeah, sounds good to me, man. All right, let's go. I didn't even know this was in the building. Yeah, well, this is the connections room. And this is the place where people can find out what's going on in the church. And it's not just for first time visitors either. For real? Nope, all members, anytime. And it's the place where you can get connected and stay connected. Right. Nick, I think we should tell some more people about the connections room. Yeah, absolutely. Whether you have a question, need some help, or just want to know more about the church, Connections is here for you. Let us help you get connected today. Thank you for joining us today on Contact. We're so blessed that you've been with us. Uh, we also want to remind you that you're welcome to attend any of our regular services here on site, or you can join us online. We stream everything. So may God continue to bless you. We'll see you next time on Contact.